Hey guys, NinjaNig333 back yet again uh, with the next round of the Pokemon TCG Regional Championships in San Diego. Uh, I believe this should be the last round of Swiss. We got my buddy Nick Moffat here on the left and uh, Gibson Archer Tang on the right. Uh, it looks like uh, Gibson is playing some probably Lugia maybe? I don't know. What? Forest Seal Stone, Speed Lightning Energy, Drapion? No, that's not Lugia. I have no idea what that is. But on the left, we have uh, Nick is playing, it looks like Wash Energy with Mirage Gate. So he, I believe he's playing, um, I believe he's playing like Amazing Rare Rayquaza Lost Box. It's very unfortunate you see three Mirage Gates from him prize. Also, I want to make a quick addendum to the last round. I did say it was a tie, and then ended my recording, and immediately after that, it showed on screen that Drew was the winner. So it looks like uh, uh, Samuel Sosa actually conceded to Drew to guarantee him top eight, I believe. So, uh, yeah, uh, very nice of his opponent to do that. That's crazy, because otherwise that match was 100% a tie. And I think that might have screwed them both. It could have potentially screwed them both out of top eight. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure on what the record is that needs to get into top 8 or not, but, uh, yeah. I do know that for Nick, uh, here, I remember from his tweets, he was saying that, um, he could have taken a risky ID here in order to make top 8. It would have been based off of resistance. I think he was on the bubble, uh, if he would have ID'd, so he goes into this match um trying to win it to guarantee it so we're gonna see how that ends out for him i already know how this match ended up i did not watch it i just know what nick's final placement is so we are going to see how this turns out for him uh, i mean i'm always rooting for nick but uh, we'll have to see does he pull it out or not Nick's always got that swag, too. Look at him. He's so swaggy. <laughs> Alright, come on. Get into the game, guys. Get in the game. Come on. Oh, did somebody drop something? Alright, let's see if we can just speed this along here. So we got, uh... Oh, it looks like it's a Vika Volt deck of some sort. That, that Moffat's against. So, yeah. So... Gibson's got a Vika Volt on his bench. He speed lightning to draw two. Uh, yeah, he, I believe he battle VIP passed to get uh, the Mew and the Vika Volt into play. He used the speed lightning. And as you can see, he's playing pretty fast. He knows what he's doing with this deck. I always love it when a player can play like that fast. I always hate it when I'm playing like this and then my opponent goes, wait, what did you do? Because they can't keep up with me. It's like, if you can't keep up with me, don't be at a regional. I'll be at like a league cup and they'll make me slow down. I'm like, dude, we only have 50 minutes to play three games. Uh, you see Moffat does start with the Rayquaza Amazing Rare. He is going to battle VIP pass. He's checking his Pokemon here. He's pulling them all to the front. He wants to check his prize cards as fast as possible. He's pulling all his Pokemon to the front and all his energies, I believe, to or at least some of the energies to the back. So that he is aware of exactly what is prized. Uh... Moffat is very good at prize checking. Yeah, so in this deck especially, if you are able to get a deck search before you lost own anything, that gives you an insane amount of information. And this deck is 100% necessary to be able to take notes and know what your prize cards are, even if you're not playing something like Heavy Ball. Uh, because you, you only have three Grass, three Lightning, and then two Metal, two Fighting, and to i think it's psychic i don't quite remember the energy lineup but i know it's three three two 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 so you want to make sure that you never prize too many energies and you never lost zone too many energies but if you're aware of which ones are in your prize cards you know which ones you can afford to lost zone if you have to if you have to make a hard decision on lost zoning later in the game which happens very often with this deck so yeah, you see he already like almost completed his deck search. He hadn't shuffled, but he was still prize checking. He is going to get the battle VIP pass again. Uh, we are going to see the Zapdos V and the Comfey 
come down. I do believe that he did say on Twitter that Zapdos was uh, the most useless card in his deck. Um, but the fact that he's playing at least two fighting energy, he could get some value out of it. If he ever goes against an Arceus deck, I I don't know if if I was playing Arceus, if I would even play Dunsparce. Just because I would only be afraid of Reggie in that situation. And I would be playing some sort of alternate attacker, like maybe Flying Pikachu in Arceus, that would just be able to deal with the Reggies anyway. So, yeah, I don't think I would be playing Dunsparce, so I don't think Zapdos would be good against that type of situation, but the Zapdos is definitely in here for things like the Vika Volt, where it can hit weakness. Um, it also can discard a special energy from your opponent's active, so that is good against Lugia in certain situations. Uh, I'm not sure what else exactly he's playing the Galarian Zapdos for. Maybe Eternatus? Uh, Eternatus uh, somehow ended up being the fifth most played deck. So if you Galarian Zapdos Eternatus, you just auto win. You literally just have to attack with the Zapdos twice. You definitely have Ordinary Rod to recycle it. But you see Nick's going through the motions. We've used concealed cards. We're on our comfy flower selecting, trying to decide which card we want to Lost Zone here. He's got a couple energies in his hand. Uh, looks like he's got the choice between Colrus and the Mirage Gate. He's going to choose the Mirage Gate. I think it's fine to Lost Zone that one Mirage Gate so that you can have that Colrus to be ordered to be able to dig harder that uh battle vip pass definitely 100 percent goes into the law zone at this point it's no longer your first turn well it is your first turn still but you've already played two this this first turn so uh it's uh 100 percent unnecessarily unnecessary to play a third one even though he has a bench space open he has a quick ball anyway And Gibson's going to do the uh, more correct thing and uh, put the ability used marker that is that coin on it so that we can more easily identify that that ability has been used on that Confei. Looks like we're going to Lost Zone and uh, Amazing Rare Rayquaza in order to keep the Energy Recycler. I think that that is correct as well. Um, Rayquaza, you only play two copies of. I believe he might also be playing two copies of the Ry Amazing Rare Raikou. I'm not 100% sure. I don't remember. I did see his list earlier. I should actually bring that up since uh, I know I have access to it. Do, 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 do. But yeah, anyway, he's uh, uh, getting the Raikou V out as well. A uh, Raikou V is specifically there to... Uh... Oh, he has, he has Salt Lake pinned. That's where he got top four. Technically, he got third. He got top... He got fourth at Salt Lake the previous year, and then third at Salt Lake this year. So, that's where he wished he was on stream, as I was saying in a previous round. But anyway, uh, looks like he just passes with the Comfy active after attaching an energy to the Zapdos. He is going to have to get multiple energy on the Zapdos in order to attack with it, because it's likely that uh, Gibson is only going to have the one Vika Volt on, uh, as the only uh, Pokemon V. But if we're looking at Nick's deck here, it's uh, obviously the four Comfy. You got two Rayquaza, two Cram, uh, Radiant Greninja, Oranguru, Manaphy, Galarian Zigzagoon, and Ice Q. Uh, and then you've got Zapdos, Luminia, and Raikou as the Pokemon Vs, so three Pokemon Vs, and a Forest Seal Stone, because why not? If you've got those uh, regular V Pokemon, why not have a V Star Power? The four Colrus, we've got three Raihan, one Boss, four Battle VIP, four Mirage Gate, four Scoop Up Net, three Switch Cart to Escape Rope, one Air Balloon, three Quick Ball, one Hisuian Heavy Ball, you've got three Water two fighting two lightning two grass one wash water energy along with two ordinary rod and one energy recycler so he's using uh he's using raikou as his lightning attacker for things like lugia he's using the zapdos to do things like uh discard special energy one shotting things like vika volt i think that since his deck is uh uh, fully basic Pokemon. Uh, the Zapdos would be a good counter to Ice Q's as well. A lot of the time when you're playing an Ice Q deck, you're using Wash Water Energy. Uh, unless you're playing the full, like, Palkia deck. But then it's perfectly fine to just knock out the Palkias with the Raikou and try to 
uh, boss around uh, the ice cube, but unfortunately he only has one boss in his list, which is, which is now in the lost zone. Uh, he is deciding that he does not need boss in this matchup, so I think it's perfectly fine to get rid of that there. Uh, you already got the thing that you're willing to knock out with the Zapdos there in the active. He is going to bench that Raikou and just pass. Yeah, uh, Gibson was not able to knock out the Comfe uh, going into Moffat's turn. He was only able to hit for 60. Uh, because of the Zapdos does allow him to do 10 extra damage, but unfortunately that is not enough for the uh, for the Comfe knockout. We do see uh, Gibson's own Raikou is coming down with a Speed Lightning Energy as well to be able to draw an additional two cards. And Quick Ball. Uh, here, he might want to get a Galarian Zigzagoon. Yep, and that's exactly what he's doing. He's going to immediately bench that to knock out the Comfey. And Moffat just immediately, like, puts it on the bench for Gibson because he knows that's exactly what he's doing and he's going for. So Gibson takes one prize and is still able to attack this turn. Moffat's going to have to decide which Pokemon he wants to promote to absorb the next 60 damage attack from that uh, Vika Volt. Um, it's a little rough for Moffat because he is item locked at this point as well. He's not able to uh, do much of anything with this Lost Zone uh, box deck um, when he has no access to Mirage Gate. So that's why you see this Zapdos being played in his deck. It is uh, a very good counter to this uh, to this Vika Volt. It also uh, one shots the Raikou as well, which is very important to note. So. Um, it, the Zapdos is high likelihood to be able to be knocked out by the uh, Raikou though because Raikou can have a really large damage output but let's see Raikou is I believe 20 times the amount of Pokemon in play uh, on the bench I think it's like 20 plus 20 for each bench Pokemon 20 40 60 80 100 so he's at 160 right now uh, he can get to 180 so as long as Moffat doesn't bench another uh, Pokemon, he can actually uh, keep the Zapdos alive. The Raikou won't be able to knock it out. Although you do see from Gibson, he does have the Forest Seal Stone in play. So if Moffat is able to get something like a Forest Seal Stone, uh, a uh, Lost Vacuum for the Forest Seal Stone, uh, that would be perfect so that he can uh, prevent uh, Gibson from being able to search his deck for any one card that he wants. Looks like we're going to get a heart attached to that Raikou V down on the bench after using the Raihan. And it looks like we're going to uh, Fleet Footed to draw a card with the Raikou. And uh, looks like we're counting up how much damage it does. It looks like he put 10 damage down on it. Oh, from the Zigzagoon. Yeah, and he's going to be able to one-shot the Vikavolt with the Raikou without having the ability to play items. So you can see the absolute power, uh, not only of Moffat himself, but of the deck that he's playing. The, these Lost Box things uh, can certainly go hard, even without access to Mirage Gate sometimes. Especially when you play uh, Heavy Raihan like he is playing. So we do see uh, that forces the Raikou active. That's the only other attacker that is set up for Gibson right now. Um, he could potentially retreat into another Vika Volt if he can bench a Vika Volt, uh, Melanie to it, and hard attach a Lightning for turn. I do see he just searched for the Melanie with the Luminion, and he uh, has uh, he has the Vika Volt in hand. But it looks like he's just going to Melanie to his active to attack with that instead. Yeah, he will be able to get the knockout with the Raikou, but no matter what, uh, yeah, so, uh, Moffat will be able to take the return knockout with the Zapdos, so we're gonna have to see, um, I think it would actually be preferred if Moffat knocks out that Ditto. Yeah, I think Moffat's gonna wanna have to get that Ditto up, but his one and only boss that he plays is in the Lost Zone currently. So he's going to have to go through this Raikou, and then that uh, allows the Ditto to be able to tr uh, use its V transformation to turn into a Vika Volt in order to be item locked again. And it would be really great if Moffat had an additional turn of items. So uh, he's going to have to, he's going to have his one turn of items here, but he's not going to have another turn of items after this. So Moffat's going to have to play as many Mirage Gates as possible. Luckily for him, he's already at 7 cards in the Lost Zone, so he will be able to do it if he has access to them in his hand right now. Also, I'm almost keeping, uh, I'm almost having trouble keeping up with the commentary just because of, uh, 
uh, just because of how fast both players are playing. But uh, this is great. It's it's great when you see that these youngins, these kids these days, they can play so fast and flawlessly too. So we do see the Greninja discards the Wash Water Energy in order to draw two cards with the Concealed Cards. And we're going to see, uh, it looks like there are three V Pokemon in play. So uh, Zapdos actually has one more energy than is required in order to use its attack. It will be able to discard the Speed Lightning Energy while one-shotting the Raikou V. Um, he does have a couple Escape Rope in his deck. Um, so it is possible that he could force up a V. But um, I don't think that uh, Gibson's going to be dumb enough to put up that uh, Ditto V. Because that's the ideal knockout on this turn. But uh, Raikou will still be fine. Uh, you're going to want to use your Mirage Gates this turn, Moffat, if you have access to them. So it looks like we are Raihaning, putting one Water Energy from his discard pile onto his Radiant Greninja, being able to search his deck for a card. That might be Mirage Gate, might be something else, I'm not sure, we'll have to see. Uh, very important to note that Moffat is playing the V Pokemon instead of the Snorlaxes. Usually this deck will play two Snorlaxes, but instead he's playing Zapdos V and Raikou V and Luminion V. So uh, it's a, a little bit more of a odd choice, but it is uh, just naturally stronger. Um, it makes your prize trade a little less favorable, but also it makes it a little easier to knock out things like the uh, Lugia when you have that Zapdos. Especially since a lot of people have been cutting Dunsparce uh, recently. It's also less energy investment than, say, the Amazing Rare Raikou to use that uh, Raikou V. So we have the scoop up net going on the Zigzagoon. He can potentially recycle that in case he has a way to one shot another Vika Volt coming down. Uh, also, he wants to make sure he can uh, use as many items as possible now um, because otherwise he's not going to be able to play him on the next turn if that uh, if that uh, Ditto becomes Vika Volt. But I think that the Ditto is more likely going to turn back into the Raikou V once the uh, active one gets knocked out. So as long as Moffat is able to just ordinary rod the Zapdos back in uh, and then find it again with another fighting energy, uh, he should be able to win. Uh, he'll actually have to Raihan to it, I believe, as well, because I don't think uh, Gibby is going to put another... Um, yeah, he's not going to be putting another V Pokemon into play. So Zapdos is going to need two energy attachments. His ability does let it attack for one colorless less. Oh, and it looks like he it looks like he one shot uh the uh the Zapdos. Uh it looks like he yeah, it looks like he one shot the Zapdos with uh with the Vika Volt. So let's see. Yeah, so Gibby was only at two prize cards remaining, so all he had to do was knock out the Zapdos. I like I completely missed the fact that he already took four prize cards. That's kind of insane. Uh, that match uh, felt like it played out very fast, but it was about 17 minutes. So we're going to have to see uh, how these next uh, matches go here. Uh, very unfortunate for Moffat that that's how that went out for him. But, uh, I mean, you know, props for Gibby for seeing the line. They both played phenomenally. And let's see if we can get right into this next match if YouTube wants to agree with me or not. Come on, YouTubey. No, I want to see prize cards. I'm surprised he's a master. He looks very young. All right, let's see those prize cards for both players. Looks like they are still shuffling up. So they're putting out their prize cards. The Zapdos could be relevant for uh, for Gibson. Uh, also, Speed Lightning, Battle VIP Pass. Nothing too relevant for both players. At least uh, Moffat doesn't have uh, triple Mirage Gate in his prize cards this time. 
I mean, Moffat was taking consistent prize cards, so he had access to his Mirage Gates, but it was just unfortunate that they were just all immediately prized. So now he's going to take a look to see what Pokemon and Energy are prized. And you can see just how fast he does that sorting, too. So he can easily identify all his prizes very quickly. Very skilled at doing that. And there he is writing it down in his little uh, recycled turtle notebook. I don't, I don't mean that they recycled a turtle to make the notebook. I mean they recycled the paper to make the notebook. <laughs> that would be uh, that would be rude if, you, if it was made out of turtles. It, it has a turtle print on the, on the cover. Yeah, so the Battle VIP Pass gets the Comfey and Radiant Greninja. That's pretty standard for a deck like this. He does also start the Manaphy. I don't think that that's going to be relevant um, because I don't think uh, Gibson's going to have anything in his deck that even does bench sniping. Uh, they do have the Ice Q on the screen right now for um, for Moffat here. Um, I'm not sure if that's going to be relevant in this, uh, in this game. I mean, it would be really good for the... Like, it would basically prevent the Vika Volt from doing any damage from the Ice Q, so you could just keep going 70, 70, 70 over and over and make the item lock not worth it. So maybe Moffat's uh, plan this game will be to go for the Ice Q. But again, you're going to need to have access to your Mirage Gate in order to do that. He doesn't play any Twin Energies. If he was playing a version that had, like, a double Snorlax in it, he might have at least one copy of Twin Energy. But, uh... Since he's playing the Rayquaza version, uh, you need tons of different basic energies. There's just not room for Twin. So he is going to have to either hard attach three times or get a Mirage Gate off. He does have the Ice Q in hand. Uh, you're probably going to want to save that to prevent it from getting damaged until the turn you can Mirage Gate to it. Looks like he scoops up the... Uh, Manaphy, he's going to Comfey, he's going to look at the top two cards of his deck, he's going to Lost on a Water, I think that's fine, he has three Basic Water and one Wash Energy available to him throughout his deck and prize cards and discard, so uh, that is the highest count of energy that he has is the Water, and he doesn't even really have any Water, the only Water attackers are the Ice Q and the Luminion, and I guess technically Manaphy, and Radiant Greninja. But anyway, uh, having access to only three of them for the game is perfectly fine, especially since, like, you're now getting your whole setup. So he is going again for the uh, Galarian Zapdos V. Uh, hopefully it does more for him this game. It would have been nice if he had something like a uh, Cape of Toughness in his deck in order to boost the, uh, the health of the Zapdos. I do know that uh, in one of his uh, decks the previous year, uh, I believe it was in Salt Lake when he made top four. He was playing a, uh, a Darkius, essentially, that he called Checkmate. That, uh, had, uh, I believe it also had Galarian Zapdos V. And it was, it had a lot of dark attackers. And then, uh, it did have a single Cape of Toughness. And the idea was that you would Cape of Toughness the Zapdos so that it couldn't get one shot by an Arceus. But there's not any room in this deck for something like that kind of tech. The amount of times it's going to even come up is not super relevant. So we're going to see maybe a lightning come down on the Zapdos. I mean, you're going to be item locked on the next turn. Looks like he's discarding the Ice Q with the Quick Ball. I'm not sure if I agree with that, but Moffat knows this matchup better than I do. So... I have not played against a lot of Ecovolt. Usually because I just win in one turn with like Mew or Reggie. <laughs> Me Reggie is very good against item lock stuff. Because it doesn't care if it's item locked. Yeah. 
Yeah, he specifically said that every card pulled its weight except Zapdos. Ice Q was MVP. It got him half his wins. Also, Moffat does get his uh, world's invite off of this tournament as well. Going up to 530 out of 500 points needed. So good on him for being able to get his world's invite off this tournament. But we're going to see. Does he win this match? Does he make it to top 8? Looks like he's still thinking. Yeah, and he just attaches and passes. So we got the Mew down for Gibson. We're going to Trekking Shoes. I'm going to keep that card. Must be important. Looks like it might have been Speed Lightning. He's going to draw two more cards. Energy Search. Probably going to get a Water Energy, discard that with something like a Quick Ball so that he can Melanie and start attacking with this uh, Vika Vault immediately, going straight in for the item lock, being able to slow Moffat down as much as possible. We do see Switch Cart comes out to switch into the Mew. Mew's going to use its ability. Uh, not going to be putting the coin on it like he should be in order to get a uh, Ultra Ball off the top six cards of his deck. He's going to use that Ultra Ball. Discard likely the Water Energy, yep, and the Luminion as well. I uh, guess he doesn't need that. He probably has a Sporter in his hand already. If he didn't, he would be using that Luminion to get likely the Melanie that he needs. So we're going to see. It looks like he's eyeing up the Radiant Greninja. I think that's a pretty good choice. If he has yet another Water Energy in his hand, he can go ahead and... Discard that and draw another two cards and then use the Melanie and then put a Water Energy onto the Vika Volt and draw another three cards. So he will be seeing fairly deep into his deck. Yeah, it looks like he has the Melanie in hand already. So he's going to go ahead and play that, draw the three cards. If he gets another energy off of that, he'll be able to conceal cards. Looks like he gets Trekking Shoes as well. Keeps it and plays it. It is another Trekking Shoes. He also keeps that card as well. Kind of crazy that he's getting exactly what he wants. Looks like that next card that he got off of it was a Battle VIP Pass. So that Battle VIP Pass is going to get him two more bench Pokemon. Potentially. At least one Mew. Um, another Pokemon he could get would be like uh, the Ditto V. Or he could get the Raikou. Uh, looks like he only gets the one Mew. He four Seal Stones for a Hisuian Heavy Ball. It looks like maybe the other Pokemon he's looking for is Prized. So he decided to just not get another Pokemon with the Battle VIP Pass. Leaving a bench spot open after he uses Hisuian Heavy Ball so that he can get that Zapdos. Yeah, that's likely what he was trying to Battle VIP Pass for, but it was Prized, so... Looks like the prizes are getting shuffled up by Moffat. Yeah, you always want to make sure that you shuffle cut your uh, uh, your opponent's prize cards after they uh, search them uh, with Hisui and Heavy Ball. Peonia, they're allowed to specifically place the prize cards back. Um, so you can't uh, shuffle them or anything. But, uh, but with Hisui and Heavy Ball, since they're shuffled, you always want to make sure you cut. Because they just got to see all six of those. You want to make sure they're not putting a specific one in a specific place. So we do see the Paralyzing Bolt uh, from the Vika Volt. It does 50 damage plus 10 from the Zapdos. So it is going to do 60. That is 10 short of a knockout. On the next turn, if Gibson gets that Galarian Zigzagoon, he could knock out the Comfy and just immediately attack again with the Vika Volt. So you can see the power of Vika Volt. When it gets its item lock going, sometimes it can just kind of roll away with it. And looks like Moffat just passes again after putting the mana fee down. Yeah, Moffat's not in that great of a position, especially with that item lock now. Of course, they wait. They always wait to put Moffat on as late as possible onto the stream, and then always put him on stream with like a bad matchup. Looks 
Like, we never see him in the early rounds. We always see him on, like, a win and end or when he's in top cut, which is crazy. You'd think that he's made enough of a name of him, uh, for himself by now that they would put him on a little earlier. Just so that he can go back and watch his games and improve. Because, again, that's what I love to do. I would love to be on stream just so that I could do that. The one time I was on stream, I learned a lot from my plays. Everybody told me that I didn't misplay at all, and I'm like, dude, I misplayed every single turn. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think I have access to that video anymore. I would love to see it again, because it, it was just such a classic match. Oh, did he draw an extra card? All right, hang on. I got to see what happened. Oh, it's a little further back. Okay. So let's see. Gibson is playing training court. Uses the training court to give out the lightning energy. Discards it with the concealed cards. Draws two cards. Puts the training court further up. Thinks. Uses boss's orders to bring up the Greninja. And then hits it for 120, which is quite a lot of damage. It's one away from being knocked out too. So if we see... Zigzagoon, scoop up Zigzagoon, he can take two prize cards and then still continue to item lock, which is crazy. <sighs> Looks like Nick's hand might be a little dead. And he passes. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I didn't see anything bad. Oh, you know what I bet happened? I bet Moffat made the motion to pass, but didn't actually say he passed, and, and Gibson just drew before his turn actually started. That seems like something Moffat would do. Yeah, Moffat may be an extremely good player, but every once in a while when he's a little stressed, he gets a, a bit sloppy. Yeah, so this is essentially giving Gibson potentially a free turn. Yeah, you can see whenever Moffat clutches his head like that, he is uh, not a happy camper. <laughs> Yeah, so they're letting uh, Gibson take his uh, turn, even though Moffat didn't pass turn. It definitely looked like to me that he passed turn, though, so. But I can't hear what they're saying at the table. So we do see the Zigzagoon. That's going to knock out the Radiant Greninja. And I would not be surprised if we see a scoop up net to do it again with the Comfey. Oh, and even if we don't, it uh, looks like we're just going to be able to see a switch out so the Comfey goes to the bench so that that, uh, so that the uh, Vika Volt can potentially just hit something else. So that it's important to note the Manaphy does have lightning weakness. So if uh, Gibson is able to get 
scoop up net off of the Mew, which we see he doesn't. He could take a essentially three prize turn against a one prize deck, which is absolutely amazing. And yeah, it looks like at this point, Moffat is going to lose. <laughs> I don't think there's any way he can come back from this. I think that this is a pretty awful matchup. And again, I don't know why they put like very, very uneven matchups on stream like this. Sometimes I don't, I don't quite understand why they do it. Like, why would you put item lock versus lost box? I think item lock versus Reggie would be more fair. I think right, Reggie is still favored, but you know, you could always get to the point where, you know, they get stalled out by a boss because there's not enough energy in the discard. And then you knock something out and then they have all copies of it in the discard pile and they're item locked. So they can't play ordinary rod. So, like, that's more of a fair matchup, but then you have, like, then you have, like, this, where, like, Moffat's deck can't function without his scoop-up nets, without his Mirage Gates, without his Ordinary Rods. So, the item lock is just so detrimental, especially since this Vikavolt is essentially one-shotting every single one of his guys while item locking. It's kind of insane how uh, one-sided this matchup ends up being. Even with the uh, Zapdos V, as you can see, uh, Gibson has two Vikavolt Vs in play. So the Zapdos only needs one fighting energy to attack, but Moffat's only playing two fighting energies. So he's going to have to dig for that. Looks like he has it now, but he's going to have to find a way to retreat this Comfey, and he doesn't have it. Looks like we are going to see the Raihan, though. We're going to put this water energy into play on the Comfey. Okay, so we do have the ability to retreat and attack with the Zapdos. Uh, the problem is, though, uh, there is enough energy on that Vikavolt. Actually, no, there's not. Um, the Vikavolt is one lightning energy away from using Super Zap Cannon, uh, which does 190. Uh, looks like that would be 10 short of the knockout. But if, uh, again, if Gibson gets that scoop up net for that Zigzagoon, which is probably the MVP of this deck so far outside of the Vikavolt uh, that's been able to put in the most work. Uh, he'll be able to one-shot that Galarian Zapdos V. Because, yeah, it requires two lightning, one colorless, and he has two water and one lightning currently on that Vikavolt. Of course, if he does do that attack, uh, it does allow the... Uh, it does allow the uh, Zapdos to, uh... well, it does allow Moffat to be able to play his Mirage Gates and things. Because uh, he'll have a turn of items. But if Moffat is able to attack with this Zapdos here, uh, he will be able to knock out that Vikavolt that has all the energy on it. So what Gibson is going to need is, uh, specifically, he's going to need a uh, Melanie and a attach for turn of some sort of lightning energy, whether that be the speed lightning or the regular basic lightning energy. Yep, so we see the retreat. The Zapdos is going to come out and one-shot it. And we're going to see, is he going to is uh, Gibson going to go for the item lock? Or is he going to try to use the super bolt zap thing, whatever it's called, uh, the second attack for 190? He has the Mew with the Air Balloon, so he is perfectly set up to be able to dig for whatever he needs. He's going to thin his hand additionally with the Quick Ball. Looks like he's getting the Ditto V, I want to say that is. I'm not 100% sure. Yep, and he, we see the Speed Lightning draws two cards. Scoop up the Zigzagoon, knock out the Comfey, taking a prize. We just need to see one more Scoop Up Net in the Melanie. We see the Melanie here. If we see another Scoop Up Net, that can go down on the Zigzagoon. Or a Choice Belt, if he plays Choice Belt in his deck as well. He just needs to see that. Looks like we're going to get the Raikou V out of the deck. Just continuously thinning as much as we can. I'm not sure if he... I didn't notice if he used concealed cards yet with Greninja. Uh, so he might still have that two card draw left. So always want to thin out as much out of your deck as possible. 
Uh, looks like we're going to bench that ditto. I think that is the correct choice. Because then you can... Uh, and it looks like... We're going to go for the super... super. Oh, no. Do, is the Galarian up this week to Lightning? I don't think so. I think it's weak to Psychic. Yeah, how has the Zapdos been being one-shot by these Super Zap Bolts? I'm not quite understand. Oh, because of the Zapdos. I'm dumb. The Zapdos is on the board, so he's doing exactly 200 with the Super Zap Bolt. Oh yeah, he, he never needed any of that. But he still got the scoop of net for the Zigzagoon, so he was able to get rid of the Comfey anyway. So it looks like this matchup is just 100% downhill for Moffitt. I don't think that there's any realistic way that he can win the game even on a good day in this particular matchup. That's pretty. It would be pretty demoralizing, personally, if they put me on stream and it was such a bad matchup like this. Like, uh, I was uh, when I was on stream, I was put against uh, Archie's Blastoise when I was playing uh, Trevenant. And I was able, never able to get the item lock in play, so he just thinned his deck until his deck was completely just energies. And then by the time I finally got the Trevenants going, um, he didn't care about the item lock because his hand was full of energies. He just dumped them under the board and one-shot all my dudes. And it happened like that pretty much two games in a row. Because I started Wob both times. So that was really demoralizing. <laughs> Also, I kept drawing really poorly off all my ends and ace trainers. Yeah, so Moffat's going to do the only thing that he can do, and he's going to try to charge up this Zapdos. Gets it back into play immediately after putting it back into the deck. Looks like he's going to Raihan for boss for the next turn. I mean, Moffat only needs two knockouts. If he's able to knock out this... Vika Volt this turn, he needs another hard energy attachment from his hand and a way to move this Comfey. And then he needs uh, Gibson to not be able to one-shot his Zapdos, which I don't think is possible for him to do. So this is still Moffat's game to potentially win. And with the way that these players can play, um, they might have enough time for game three. If they have 10 minutes, they, sh they might be able to finish... Uh, game three during the last three turns that they're given after time is called. So yeah, I thought that Moffat was win uh, losing this game, but uh, maybe he is pulling it out. He does only have five in the loss zone as well, which is important to note. So he's not going to be able to uh, Mirage Gate at all, even though he finally has access to items this turn. Not quite sure what he's grabbing with his Raihan. So, scoop up net the active. He has another fighting energy, so he can attach that for turn. He's got, looks like, at least one Mirage Gate, maybe two. Energy Recycler, Wash Water... Luminion, the Comfey he just scooped up, Colrus. Yeah, so he just attacks and hopes that his opponent can't get three water energy onto one dude. Or three, three, uh, three energy. So I don't think that there's a world where this Zapdos can get one shot unless Gibson is playing some sort of psychic attacker, I guess. Because yeah, it does have psychic retreat. So we see the, uh... Ditto transforms into the Vika Volt from the bench. We get the hard attach for turn. I'm um, not sure what he's playing currently to his discard pile because it's completely off screen. Uh, looks like the heavy ball. He only has one prize card left, so he just quickly looks at it and puts it back. Don't need to shuffle that if it's only one card. We get the uh, Ultra Ball discarding Mew. And something else we haven't decided on yet, it looks like. To get the air okay discarding the uh the also the raikou to get the aerodactyl that's likely just a thin the aerodactyl is completely useless at this point in the game uh because number one he's not playing lugia 
And number two, the V-Star power is already used, so. And then we see Judge come out. So yeah, this is a very awkward spot for Gibson, actually, because what is he going to do against the Sapdos? All that Nick needs is one more energy attachment, so maybe he just item locks and hopes that Nick can't get another energy. And it looks like there wasn't another way to discard uh, cards from his hand because that uh, Aerodactyl, you saw it accidentally get dropped from the deck. But uh, it is getting shuffled back in with the Judge. But yeah, we have the Training Court in play. So Moffat's going to definitely be able to just use that to get an energy back as long as there's one left in his discard. But I mean, the discard pile is kind of flayed out there or whatever it's called. So uh, it doesn't actually look like there are any water energy or uh, any energies of any type in there right now i think i see the manaphy and the ice q um as water pokemon maybe i guess one of them could be uh, i think the one above the comfy maybe could be a water energy but i think that's the ice q we see energy search come out from gibson again thinning his very small deck that was just judged and he passes allowing the zapdos to be able to just take a one prize turn we do see that there are energy cards in his hand uh, but then this also, since Moffat only has the one boss, and I believe he doesn't have it in his hand right now. I think he did have it in his hand, or he was considering using the Raihan to get it. Um, but yeah, uh, Moffat only plays one boss. So now this uh, gives Gibson that extra turn he needed to get an additional energy into play. So on the next turn, he can hard attach another Lightning Energy and Melanie, and then one shot this Zapdos for the game. Uh, leaving it so that Moffat can only go down to one prize. So again, beautifully played by Gibson, just doing exactly what he needed to do in order to uh, give him as many outs to win the game as possible, especially with that judge. Um, so we're going to have to see. I mean, he could escape rope, I guess. But yeah, Gibson's at one prize, so he can't attack with the cram. So, I mean, anything that Gibson puts up will be one shot by the zapdos but you know he's not going to put up the zapdos the best or the uh the vikavolt so the best thing to knock out would just be the mew yeah you know that if you play escape rope he's either putting up the zigzagoon or the greninja so we see the melanie and then he's got the training court so he can train in court for the lightning energy and moffat already extends the hand as soon as he saw the melanie get put down on the board he extends the hand knowing that he's lost and yeah, good games from both players. I think they both played that beautifully, especially Gibson there. Um, unfortunately, yeah, it's just a really awful matchup for Moffat, so there wasn't really anything he could do. And that seems to be the only things they ever want to put on stream for him. <laughs> so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I will put up... Um... So we had... Uh, this was uh, Moffat's list here on Twitter. So he got 10th place at San Diego. Uh, he said everything pulled his weight except for Zapdos. Ice Cube is MVP. So we have, yeah, the four. Yeah, this I, I read off this whole list already, but in case you guys wanted to see it. So, yeah, uh, very unfortunate that this just can't really... Do, I mean, look at all, how many items he has. How reliant on items he, he is. So, that's four, eight, 12... I mean, 26 of his cards in his deck. That's almost a third are item cards. And he just can't play any of those. And he just has to hope that he gets to Zapdos and then hard attaches to it two or three times. So, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, thanks, you guys, for watching. As always, uh, I believe it will be top eight coming up next. So, I will see you guys then. Make sure you comment, like, and subscribe to uh, feed that delicious YouTube algorithm. And uh, make sure that if you see me at Orlando Regionals or any other event that you uh, pick up a copy of the Ninja Nick V-Star Marker because these are available now. So I'll see you guys later.